ஓம் நமோ வெங்கடேசாய சுக்லாம்பரதரம் விஷ்ணு சசிவர்ணம் சதுர்புஜம் பிரசன்னவதனம் தியாய சர்வவிக்னோபாந்தே வியாசாய விஷ்ணுபாய வியாசூபாய விஷ்ணவே நமோ வை பிரம்மனிதே வாசிஷ்டாய நமோ நம ஸ்மரணமாத்திரேன ஜன்ம சம்சார பந்தநாத் விமுச்சதே நமஸ்தஸ்மே விஷ்ணவே பிரபு விஷ்ணவே லட்சுமிநாத சமாரம்பாம் நாத்தே அமுன மத்தியமாமஸ்மதாச்சாரிய பரியந்தம் வந்தே குரு பரம்பராம் வார்த்தாய பிரதிபோதிதாம் பகவதா நாராயணேனஸ்வயம் வியாசேனிதாம் புராண முனி மத்தியே மகாபாரதம் அத்வைதாமிரதவர்ஷிணீம் பகவதீம் அஷ்டாதசாத்தியாயினீம் அம்பத்வாமனுசந்ததாமி பகவத்கீதே பவத்வேஷிணிம் வசுதே வசுதம் தேவம் கம்சாணூரமர்தனம் தேவகீ பரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குரு ஓம் நமோ வெங்கடேசாயம் ஏ பிரணாம் சிவிரிபடி So we have been looking at chapter 9 of the Bhagavad Gita where Bhagavan talks about Patram Pushmam Palam Toyam Yome Bhaktya Preach Padam Bhaktya Preach Asnam Itriya Tatrana Subsequently Bhagavan said Very simple solution Yatka Roshi Yatna Snasi Yat Juhoshi Datasi Yatte Yatta Tapasya Sikaunte Yatat Kurushva Madar Pranam Do everything as an offering to me Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you give, whatever you offer, whatever tapas you are doing, everything just offer it to me once you do that shubhasham that means you will be relieved from all the punya and papa karmas <clears throat> and then with that uh, tyagam the, the, the tyaga mind you get united with me and then ultimately reach me alone that's what bhagavan says let's move on to shloka number 29 <clears throat> hari om guru ji hari om samoham sarva bhuteshu name dveshyosti na ீங்ஸ் <coughs> i'm 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 you no know, i'm like a witness and therefore i'm dispassionate so that means i am not uh, you know uh, uh, present in, in a greater proportion with somebody and uh, in lesser proportion with somebody i'm pres- uh, present equally samaham is equal i'm present equally in all the living beings sarva bhuteshu name dveshu asti na priya there is nobody who is very uh, you know this uh, very close to me priya ha not there is anybody who is who is very uh, enemy or i'm who i uh, hate that means i don't have any likes or dislikes and i am present equally in all be- beings as a as a as a as a antaryami as a sakshi i am present in all the beings i am neither a hate i am no hatred towards anybody nor any liking for somebody else but then the second line is glorifying the bhakta he saying ye bhajanti tu am ye bhajanti tu maam bhuktu but maam ye bhajan bhaktiya ye bhajanti so those people who worship me with affection that is with love and affection bhakti maite teshu so they live in me that means they are living in me cha api ham that means i also live in them so that means he is in a greater proportion although he is present equally in all beings those bhaktas who worship him they are not only is present in them but he is saying they are present in me that means he is more greater than that's what bhagwan also said no jani to me atma me mata that means jani is like the core of my heart so bhagwan so the people who who are devoted to him bhagwan says not only i reside in them they also reside in me supposing somebody is residing in your mind in your heart that means he is very close to you no so bhagwan that is what he is saying although i am present equally in all beings a person who worships me to that person i am much dearer that's what bhagwan is saying so that's what he is saying samoham samos samoham sarva bhuteshu i don't have any specific hatred or liking for any individual whenever i am present in their heart but if a person worships me with love and affection in that person i resent in that person not only that that person resides in me that person resides in me may, 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 that means that he is very much dear to him when when does say somebody reside in your mind only when you like him no when you like him he is residing in your heart not in my in the heart he is residing in your heart that means he is so affectionate i mean so there is so much of love and affection so bhagwan says a person who uh, used who, who worships me that person is dear to me and he resides in me also that means all the other non bhaktas doesn't reside in the bhagwan so that means they are not so close to him that's what bhagwan is trying to say so samam sarvesh bhuteshu name dveshe asti na priya ye bhajanti tum ye bhajanti tum maam bhaktya maite teshu chapya let's move on to shloka number 
अचेत सुदुराचार भजते मन भाक साधुरव सतव्य so he is giving one more hope for all these you know this uh, people who have committed sins we say happy even though chet a person remains what so ducha so dura char so that means one who is not disciplined one who commits all these sins and all those things even though a person may be a, a great a person who is committing the greatest sins or whatever it is chet so the so ducha dura char ha once he starts worshiping me bajate mam ananya bhag that means without at, at at some point of time that person starts worshiping me without uh, without any other thought that means ananya bhag that means he starts worshiping me completely without any deviation bajate he worships me sadhu reva so that person must be considered mantapya means to be considered what sadhu reva so that means he must be considered as a great sadhu also samyak why because samyak व्यवस्थित गता है वेरी गुड रिसॉल्व वेरी गुड रिसॉल्व ऑफ वर्शिपिंग भगवान वंस यू टेक एन दट रिसॉल्व ईवन दो यू मस्ट डन ग्रेटेस्ट सीन इन द पास दट पर्सन मस्ट बी कंसिडर्ड एस द साधु एग्जाम्पल वन एक्सापल इज दिस दिस अजामिला चरित्र सो अजामिला चरित्र भगवान ही वॉज द ग्रेटेस्ट यू नो बस ब्राह्मण वॉज डूंग ऑल दिस अग्निंग थिंग सडनली आउट ऑफ सम you know this uh, non control of the senses he fell into the company of a, a vaishyastri and started living with them started committing all sorts of things they taking to drinking then uh, uh, doing even they went to the extent of killing the people and all those so all sorts of kins uh, since he started committing but then <clears throat> because of his previous uh, good karmas he kept the name uh, of his last name as narayana and started calling narayana 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 because of that uh, namas uh, this uh, namasparanam ultimately at the time of when he was about to leave this body he happened to see this uh, vishnu dutas fighting with the yamadutas and there was a good satsang so he was, why did this uh, satsang arise because of his previous good karmas which he did when he was a, when he was a brahmin and doing all this you know agni hotam and all those things and because of that he kept his name as narayana and because his son's name was narayana he started calling narayana narayana that slowly expiated his sins and sins and therefore when he, at the time of his death he called his son narayana And immediately the Vishnu Dutas came and then you know, uh, part with the Yama Dutas and removed the noose from his body. And therefore, when he listened to that conversation, immediately he took that resolve. Yes, who oh, even without knowing the meaning of this Narayana or not even addressing to the Narayana, I called the name Narayana, and that was so powerful and gave me this kind of a satsang. So I'm mean, if I start doing the Nama the Nama Sankirtan in a proper manner, how oh, it would be so? Even he goes all the way to Haridwar and then performs all these good things and I mean the Nama Sankirtan and everything, and finally he's the boat. And finally reaches the abode of Bhagwan Narayan. That's what it is. So even the worst ever sinner, once he starts re- make, uh, resolving a good resolve of you know uh, worshiping the Bhagwan, then thereafter that person has to be con- uh, considered as a sadhu because he has taken a good resolve. So another example is this Valmiki Rishi. The Valmiki Rishi was a uh, uh, you know he was a hunter in the forest, Ratnakar, and he was stealing the people who were coming on the way, and sometimes even killing them for the sake of whatever he is required for the sake of his family. Once Narada happened to visit that. And therefore, because of the satsang of this Narada, he asked him to find out from his relatives whether they partake the sins that he is committing for their sake. Nobody, nobody wanted to own the sins of this Ratnakar, including his wife and children and his parents. And that became a turning point because of the because of the satsang. Again, the satsang is because of his association with Narada. Even just a few minutes of meeting Narada could completely change. And thereafter, he gave him this initiated him this Rama mantra. Even he couldn't say Rama, so he gave him the reverse. Mara, 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 Mara. Once he starts saying Mara, 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 it becomes Rama, 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 Rama. Then he got a. Then he became the greatest Rishi who even composed this, uh, the the first ever story of Rama, na called as this Valmiki Rama, na. So that is the greatness of you know making a good result. That's what Bhagwan is saying here. Even though he may be the worst ever sinner in this earth, once you make say result to chant my names and worships me completely. that person must be considered as a sadhu because of the good resolve that he has taken to you know worship me that's what bhagwan says so that's uh, so he is glorifying the bhakti in this entire chapter in fact the chapter 12 is the bhakti yoga but even if you see in this chapter 9 most of the discussions are on bhagwan's bhakti only now let's move on to the next shloka which is shloka number 31 chipram bhavati dharmatma शश्वत शांति निगछति 
ಕೌಂತೇಯ ಪ್ರತಿಜಾನೀ ನ ಮೇ ಭಕ್ತ ಪ್ರಣಸ್ಯತಿ again another declaration bhagwan is making here now how does that uh, the, uh, even the person who has committed the greatest sin chipram bhavati dharmaatma chipram is very soon very soon he becomes a very great uh, dharmaatma that means he is following the path of dharma even though he must be the most adharmic person in the world once he for some reason he starts worshiping me without any deviation and that person chipram very soon becomes dharmaatma he becomes a great uh, uh, pa- pa- follower of the path of dharma ಶಶ್ವತಿ ಶಶ್ವತಿ ಶಶ್ ಶಶ್ವತ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಶ್ವತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಪೀಸ್ ನಿಗಚಿ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಮೋಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ಹೈ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಎವರ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇ ಅಟೈನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಎವರ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಆರ್ ಇವನ್ ವಿ ವೈಲ್ ವೈ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಆದಿ ಶಂಕರ ಪುರ್ಸಿ ಇಟ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ದಿ ಜೀವನ್ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಫ್ ವಿ ಅಟೈನ್ಸ್ ದ ಪೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ uh bhagwan slowly turns him around once a person makes a resolve all that is required by bhagwan is even he may uh, i mean when in fact that is a great consolation for all of us we are not as worse sinner as uh, jamila or or this you know this ratnakara or anything like that even those people can become such great devotees of bhagwan what about us we are, we, we are not in that category at least may not be we are not in that category of vasishta vamadeva or hanjane or anybody like that but still we are somewhere in between that so once you make a firm resolve yes let me start worshiping bhagwan regularly then bhagwan takes us uh, takes us along with that path and then for slowly directs us in the right path and then soon we become uh, right we become get into the path of dharma the righteousness and gets, gets into the the peace of mind that's what is required ultimately for us while living in this world so he gets the peace of mind kauntaya okunti san prati jana hi let me oh, please declare this what is this declare name bhakta pranashyati very great declaration the concept mai bhakta that means my bhaktas my devotees na pranashyati they will never get destroyed they will never perish once a person becomes a devotee he says he, my devotees will never get destroyed they will never perish at all that's what bhagwan says that's why you know even the chapter 6 he says no bhagwan says once a yoga prashto suchi naam shrimatam gehe yoga prashto bhi jayate that means when a person was fallen from this path of this yoga also then he is made to for made to be born in a in a family which is conducive for him to continue the path uh, for the the path which he pursued in the previous ones he doesn't he doesn't have to start from beginning he starts from the pl- pl- place where he left in the previous birth and continues then ultimately reaches me about so that is the greatness of bhagwan that is the kind of compassion he has got he is making a great declaration name bhakta pranashyati that means my bhaktas never never ever will get perished or never ever will get destroyed so there is no question on that arjuna make this declaration he says it's a great declaration bhagwan is making a declaration arjuna you also declare this my bhakta will never get perish so that means once a, even the worst ever sinner he is giving a hope for a worst ever sinner all that he needs to do is resolve is yes, from today onwards i'm going to worship bhagwan and continue that path continuously and thereafter bhagwan c- comes to his help and then directs him on the right path and then finally takes him into sabhav that's what the bhagwan says so that is all that is required is bhakti that's all what he is saying is love and affection for bhagwan that's what he is talking about in shloka 31 this also very important shloka name bhakta pranashyati is being quoted in several places bhagwan so the bhagwan the, the devotees never get never ever get destroyed that's what it is shloka number 32 mam hi pardha vyapashritya ye sisyu papa yo nayaha ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯೋ ವೈಶ್ಯಾಸ್ತಾ ಶೂದ್ರ ಪಿಯಾಂತಿ ಪರಂ ಗತಿ ಅನದರ್ ಹೋಪ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಹೋಪ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಂ ಹಿ ಪಾರ್ಥ ವ್ಯಪಾಶ್ರಿತ್ಯ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವ್ಯಪಾಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ ಆಶ್ರಿತ್ಯ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ಮಾಂ ಇನ್ ಮೀ ಸೊ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಓ ಪ್ರತಿಸನ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಎನಿ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಎ uh shelter under me that means he has surrendered unto me so even though he may be from papa yoni he that means he is completely into this you know uh for this uh, come out of this entire the greatest of the sins so yoni, uh, yoni means the womb or the source so he has come from all the various papas on uh, this uh, sins that means all in the previous births everywhere he has been only committing sins 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 etc in this birth also he, he arose out of this uh, this uh, sins and he has been committing sin but at a point of time he says yes enough is enough 
I'm going to surrender to Bhagawan. So that means if a person just surrenders to me, what happens to me? He may be a Sri, he may be a lady, he may be a Vaishya, he may be a trader class, he may be a Shudra, a working class. Yanti Param Gati, that means he will ultimately reach my abode. That's what Bhagawan says. Why is he choosing these three people? Why is he choosing three? Why is he choosing Vaishya? Why is he choosing Sudha? That is, uh, as per the uh, Shastric injunctions, there are only two classes of people who can uh, learn Veda and chant Vedas. They are the, the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas. These are the two classes of people. So that means there is a there was a feeling in the in the entire community that people who know Veda, who can learn Veda and understand Veda, they are the people only they are entitled to uh, get into moksha. That was the feeling that was there at the per period of time. So Bhagawan says nothing like that. Nothing like that. So he's going to talk in the next loka. Maybe we'll cover it tomorrow. So any person, he may be the worst ever sinner. A person who is not entitled to, or uh, there is an injunction for him not to study Vedas or not to understand the meaning of the Vedas. Those kind of people are the Sthris, the ladies, Vaishyas, the trading class, the Shudras, the working class. Even those people, if they are surrendered to me, they will reach my abode. So that means Moksha is not exclusive right of one set of people at all. That's what Bhagawan is trying to say. Anybody unto the sun, including the even, even the, uh, the non-human beings. You know, we saw the case of Gajendra, we saw the case of Jatayu. Anybody under the sun, any any living being under the sun, as long as it surrenders to me and then takes shelter under me, that person is that being, not even the person, that being is completely relieved from all his papas and the, uh, this sins, and they will ultimately reach me. Param Gad, that's what it is. So this is the greatest hope Bhagawan is giving to all of us. He's saying, doesn't matter whosoever he may be, you have committed the greatest ever sins in the past. If you want to start a new leaf, yes, start doing now, right, right now. Then surrender unto me, start. Uh, having bhakti towards me, be regular at it. And that person, I'm giving you the assurance that he will ultimately reach my abode. Yanti Param Gat, that means he will ultimately attain the moksha. So that is the hope he has given to all of us. So moksha is not the exclusive right of only a few classes of a few set of peoples. It is available to everybody. The only common denominator is that person should have surrendered to Bhagawan and that must be, uh, must be a bhakta of Bhagawan. That's all that is required. Nothing else is required. And that is a Samanya Dharma. That means it is not related to any particular class, the, any, any Varna or Ashrama Dharma. If it is a Brahmachari, his, his, his Dharma is only to read. He cannot start earning money. Whereas Grahastha, is, he can earn money, but his, his job is only to do Dana Dharma, etc. So there are certain Dharmas, there are certain uh, duties uh, uh, attached to each particular Ashrama or Varna. But then this uh, Bhakti, and then surrender to Bhagavan is a Samanya Dharma. Anybody under the sun can do uh, uh, surrender to the Bhagavan. Anybody under the sun can do bhakti for Bhagavan in whichever bhava. Maybe you're like a father or like a son or like a child or like a, a brother like or like a, a friend, whatever it is. In fact, some people have done even as enemy, as he told you, the Shishupala and then Kamsa taught Krishna to be enemy and they also attain moksha. Whatever bhava it is, because as long as your thought is completely on Bhagavan, the mind gets purified and thereafter you reach the board of Bhagavan. That is the kind of assurance that Bhagavan is giving in that. So just to remove the myth that the moksha is available only for certain type of people and certain type of ashramas. Earlier it was thought that only the more the sannyasas, sannyasis alone can complete moksha. Sannyas ashrama is the only thing for moksha. Bhagavan is dispelling all those myths and saying that anybody under the sun can get moksha as long as he has surrendered to me. He may be the worst ever sinner in this universe. He has, he has committed millions of sins in the past. As long as he has surrendered to me and does bhakti towards me, he gets moksha. That's the assurance Bhagavan is giving. Let's continue the discussion tomorrow. Vasude Vasutam Devam Kamsa Chanura Madhanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagadguram Sarvam Sri Krishna Arpanamastu Krishna 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 Krishna. Krishna.